Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, I've been shopping my shelves for the 100 book challenge. So as you may know, I'm about to embark on the Read What You Own Challenge or 100 Book Challenge where I'm going to read 100 books I already own before I buy any new ones. And that may sound like a difficult thing to do and it may sound like something that you wouldn't necessarily want to do. You know, why would you forego the pleasure of buying new books? Um, But the reason I'm doing it is because I buy books at a far greater rate than I read them. And what that means is I end up with loads of great books sat on my shelves just gathering dust. Um, And I've kind of proven that to myself today. I I went on a bit of a tour around around my office and plucked various books out that I haven't read or haven't reread since I bought the copy I've got of them now. Um, and I've got some real treasures here that I think would have just sat there if I wasn't doing this 100 book challenge. Um, you know, the problem with buying new books is you're always focused on the last things you bought rather than the things you've already got. Um, so what I thought I'd do today is give you a little tour of some of the things I've plucked off um, the shelves, talk about like how I came by the book, um, if I can remember, some of them I can't remember. Um, and, you know, just bring to life that that concept of the fact that um, that shopping your shelves, and that's a phrase I, I didn't invent, so I can't remember where I heard it, but I think it's a lovely phrase. And, and Troy Tradup, uh, when I used it in my uh, Read What Your Own announcement video the other day, um, commented on, on what a good phrase it is. So I really like the idea of, of shopping my shelves for things to read rather than shopping on Amazon or at an equivalent bookseller. So let me talk you through what I've got here. Um, and there is a similarity between all of these books, which is they're all short, um, quite deliberately, because as I said in my announcement video, I want to try and get through this challenge as quickly as possible. Um, but even just by picking short books, I've got some fantastic ones. And I've got probably 15 things here. I haven't even looked at my Kindle yet. I know I've got a ton of stuff, like literally hundreds and hundreds of books on my Kindle that I haven't read. And indeed, there are hundreds of books, well, certainly dozens of books on the shelves behind me and even more in the garage that I haven't read. Um, so anyway let me go through what I've got so the first one is a book I've read before but I haven't read it since it came out in this edition Um, and that is the Backman books by Stephen King so actually quite thick quite long but it's four books and so it counts as four books for the read what you own challenge so those four books being Rage um, which is a book that that King has subsequently withdrawn from sale so it's a book about a um, a school shooting and I think it was linked in some way to a a school shooting after being published Um, and King for understandable reasons, decided to to unpublish it at that point. So you can only get it either in the original paperback with the Richard Backman name on it, which is um, very expensive, or in this collection. Um, So I originally bought this when it came out. Um, and then subsequently um, sold that copy off. And as I've kind of been recollecting King, I bought a copy of it, um, I guess a year or two ago. Um, And like everything else, it's just sat on my shelves, not getting read. So um, I thought this was a good opportunity to to pluck it out again. So anyway, we've got Rage, we've got The Long Walk, um, which I remember quite well, Roadwork, which I don't remember at all, um, and The Running Man, which I think I remember much more from the Schwarzenegger movie than I do from the book. So looking forward to, to reading those four again. Um, next is one that I did actually buy quite recently. Um, I've got a whole stack. I've got about six or seven of these Mills and Boone Heroes doubles, which I really enjoy. So you get two romantic suspense novels in each book. Um, so not very thick, but it counts as two books because these two books were originally published as, as separate volumes. Um, so this one has got Rogue Christmas Operation. So given that um, given that my Read What You Own challenge will no doubt go well into December, if not beyond, um, I, I thought this would be a nice Christmas read. I don't really know what it's about. Um, and then it's also got Canine Patrol by Julie Miller. So sorry, uh, Rogue Christmas Operation is by Juno Rushton. So yeah, I, I think I got this one off eBay. The other Mills and Boone doubles I've got, I picked up in a, a charity shop a little while ago. Um, but yeah, if ever I see them when I'm out and about and they're cheap, I buy them because they're fun. Um, 
Next, we have a um, an author by uh, sorry a book by a very well known author, albeit uh, an author who is much better known for his children's books. Uh, that book is Roald Dahl. So I bought this copy, I think probably a couple of years ago. Um, so this is my uncle, my uncle Oswald. Um, I, I think it's his only adult novel. Um, so he wrote tons of short stories for adults, uh, many of which I've read and really really enjoyed. Um, this one I haven't read nice and thin so I thought that would be a good one to to pluck off the shelves and read um, this one I bought um, so I, I'm pretty sure I had a copy of this previously so this is Invasion of the Body Snatchers by Jack Finney the inspiration for the, the 50s movie and subsequent uh, remakes um, so I'm pretty sure I had a copy of this years ago and never read it I subsequently about three years ago I suppose found this in a local charity shop um, and bought it um, and from the channel and novella read this not that long ago and said it was great um, it's a book I've been wanting to read for ages so having bought a copy well having had two copies of it over the years I'm not sure why I haven't read it I really like the movie versions both the, the 50s one and the 70s one and even the 90s one that was directed by Abel Ferrara um, so yeah looking forward to giving giving that a try at some point. Um, this one I think my wife bought me. So this is uh, Troublesome Words by Bill Bryson, which is kind of like a, a bit like a dictionary, um, but it's a dictionary of, of words that are weird in some way. Um, so typ typical Bryson, kind of playful, playfully intelligent, I guess I'd call Bryson. Um, I've always enjoyed the Bryson stuff I've read. I haven't read a huge amount, but this is nice and slim. So I thought I'd pluck that off the shelves to read. Um, next, a book by an author I've read a couple of books by and enjoy both of them. This one I bought because it's supposed to be quite disturbing, um, but I haven't read it yet. Uh, and that book is I'm the King of the Castle by Susan Hill, which I think is kind of a book about um, kind of childhood bullying and things like that. Um, so I've read um, The Woman in Black, obviously, by Hill and another, another ghost story by her, the name of which now escapes me. Um, this is supposed to be one of her best books up, up there with uh, with The Woman in Black, albeit a very different vibe, I think. Um, again, I think I bought this probably around the time I started the channel um, and not read yet. Uh, next, we have Nine to the Hunter by Davis Grubb. So this was very kindly sent to me by a subscriber um, some time ago. So probably reasonable, well, at least a year ago, I think. So shame on me for not having read it yet. So the basis of the of the classic Robert Mitchum movie, which I'm also ashamed to say I haven't seen. Um, so I think I will read this and then try and seek out the movie and watch that. Uh, next we have um, a, a book by an author I really like, Sarah Graham, so I love her book Come Closer, I think it's really excellent. Um, this is the first in her uh, Claire DeWitt mystery series, so this is City of the Dead, so this was a birthday present from a friend, uh, I can't remember if it was my birthday this year or last year, or maybe it was Christmas, it was definitely a present there. Um, so yes, looking forward to, uh, to diving into this one at some point, really like Sarah Graham, really like mysteries, and this series is supposed to be very good. Uh, next we have a book that was sent to me by the author. I'm ashamed to say I've got lots of books that have been sent to me by authors that I haven't managed to get to yet. Um, I do always say when people approach me and say, can I send you my book to review? I always say, yes, but I can't guarantee how quickly I can get to it. Um, so this by an author I'm a big fan of, Brian Bowyes. I've read a few things by Brian. Really, really enjoyed them. Uh, this is Perpetual Dread. Is this, I can't remember if this one's a novel. No, I think this is a short story collection rather than a novel. Um, I think Brian Bowie is a really interesting uh, author. Really, he writes in quite a stripped down way, but he packs a load of horror into his stuff. So looking forward to that one. Um, next, a more recent acquisition and a, um, a longer book, but one with lots of illustrations in like these. So it shouldn't take too long to read. Um, that is Atomic Werewolves and Man-Eating Plants, uh, edited by Robert Dice and Wyatt Doyle. Um, so they are the owners and proprietors of the Men's Adventure Library, um, which I've talked about on the channel before. They publish fantastic stuff. So they reprint stories and articles and things like that from Men's Adventure magazines from kind of the 50s, 60s and 70s. Always loads of fun. Um, and this looks like no exception. I mean, that cover is just wonderful, isn't it? Um, Right, next, a couple of books that were sent to me by a publisher some time ago without, so they didn't approach me first, They just I just got this box through the post with loads of wonderful looking books uh, in it. I've read, I think, a couple of them so far. Um, these were two two of the thinner ones, so uh, I thought I would uh, I thought I would chuck these in for my Read What Your Own Challenge. So they are um, The Country Will Bring Us No Peace by Matthew Simard, um, which is translated from the, from the French by Pablo Strauss. Um, so I don't know anything about this, but 
isn't that cover like wonderfully minimalist really like that um and then one of the authors they sent me a few books by is Joel Lane, who I've heard great things about from subscribers. Uh, so this is The Witnesses Are Gone by him, which again is very slim, so it's less than 100 pages. But it's a book, so it counts as a book. Um, oh, it's got a blurb on the back from Matt Wazilowski, who I really, really like. Um, and Adam Neville, who I also really, really like. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Next, we've got a few that are maybe a bit more... Um, or a couple anyway, that are maybe a bit more predictable. So the next books in the ongoing series that I am reading, um, but have been neglecting a bit recently. So I've got The Survivorist number 11, The Reprisal by Jerry Ahern, um, and um, The Executioner, book 20, New Orleans Knockout by Don Pendleton. You can tell it's 20 because annoyingly the publisher has not put, in these earlier Corgi editions, for some reason, they decided not to put the number of the book on the cover. Uh, but someone has written in biro at the top there, 20, which is helpful. Um, early on, fairly early on in the, in the days of the channel, I bought a box of 44 NASCAR romances by Harlequin. There's a video of me unboxing it on the channel if you, if you haven't watched it, um, if you like the sound of that. Anyway, I've only read, I think, two or three of them so far of the, of the 44. So uh, this, I think, is one of the ones I haven't read. This is Teaming Up by Abby Gaines. Um, I really enjoyed the couple that I have read. Um, so this one, by the looks of it, is about a... Um, I don't even know what it's about. It's about a scientist um, who pretends to... I, I don't know, it, but it looks fun. <laughs> and it's it's set around the world of NASCAR. So who would want to read that? Um, next, um, a book in a, another book in a series that I'm kind of collecting, but unlike The Executioner uh, and Survivalist books, this series is really difficult to come by. I did do a video talking about the books I've got in the series. So I've got the first six now. There's another two that I'm just searching for and haven't managed to find. I've read the first one. Um, so the second one is uh, uh, The Trial. This is by James Dark. Um, so this is book two in the Witches series, which is a very, very trashy but quite entertaining series of uh, kind of historical horror novels from the, from the uh, UK in the 80s. Um, next, uh, another book by an author who I bought loads of books by having read one. I had this terrible habit of I read one book by an author and then buy as much stuff by them as I can find. And then it just sits around not getting read. Wait, waiting for me to do another Read What You Own challenge. Um, so the author is Donald Goyne. So I've read a couple of his books now. This is the first in his Kenyatta series of books. Uh, so this is Crime Partners. So Donald Goyne uh, was a black crime writer in the States in the 70s. He only wrote, he was only publishing for about five years before he was murdered. Um, but I really enjoyed the, the couple of books I read. Uh, he managed to to write quite a lot in those in those five years I think at least a dozen books so I've got a fair few of them which I need to work my way through um, and then finally a book that so like Invasion of the Body Snatchers this is a book I've been meaning to read for yes 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 and I, I think I've actually ended up with two copies of it so um, I bought a copy of it uh, again sort of in, in the fairly early days of the channel um, and then I also received a second-hand copy of it in one of the Abominable Book Club subscription boxes. Um, but I really want to read it. So that book is The Totem by David Morrell. So big fan of his uh, books like First Blood. And um, he wrote the novelisation for Rambo and, and Rambo 3 as well, both of which are entertaining. Also, I think his book Testament is fantastic. This is more of a horror novel. Most of his stuff is kind of thrillerish. Um, I also read one of his more recent books, which I think was called Creepers or something like that, which is about urban exploring, um, which was really good. So yeah, this is more of a straight horror book, um, but comes highly recommended by various people. So I, I definitely need to get to this one. And the Rebot Your Own Challenge gives me that opportunity. Um, so yeah, a nice stack of books there. I will pepper these through the uh, the, the Rebot Your Own Challenge. Um, and we'll, I'll, I'll still be doing uh, like TBR videos and things like that each month for that, because I'm still going to be taking part as much much as I can in like reading events and things like that um, but trying to do it without clearly without buying any new books um, but yeah these are the, these are the things that will also end up in that mix I think um, but tons more on the shelf tons more on my Kindle unread uh, which I need to um, to kind of trawl through and, and pluck some other gems from um, so yeah I thought it'd be fun today just to talk through some of the some of the random stuff I've got on my shelves um, and just just to show you that Doing something like this, um, like as I said at the start, while it might might seem like um, a bit of an imposition, it might be something you know, it might seem like something difficult to do. It actually, 
unlo unlocks <laughs> unlocks your shelves, unlocks all the books that you've had sat there for ages, uh, sadly unread. Um, so yeah, looking forward to diving into all of these. Um, do let me know in the comments if you're taking part in the 100 book challenge, the Rebot Your Own Challenge, um, um, what kind of things you're planning to read for it. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.